in this video we are going to see the history of the robots what are the different kinds of robots some timeline of the robots and the basic definition of robots i am dr r srinivasan professor in the department of mechanical engineering rus college of engineering dendekal so whenever we think about robots the first kind of robots which come into our mind are humanoids or androids humanoids or androids are human like robots physically as well as they behave like human beings these kinds of robots are much shown in our movies but any of such a intelligent robots have yet to be developed so here the robots the robo the humanoids or androids the area of humanoids or androids development is continuously progressing and uh, the intelligence of the robots are continuously increasing so this is one uh, kind of robots the humanoids or androids the second one is called as the mobile robots the mobile robots are the robots which can move from one place to another place which is mainly used for material transportation It carries materials from one place to the another place so like agvs these robots are called as mobile robots and third one the military robots the military robots are robots which are used for spying in the military as well as they can be used for fighting with the enemy camps also so if you see the second diagram there are number of elements are available for spying like uh, microphones antennas uh, zoom cameras the rear cameras as well as here again a camera is there so number of cameras antennas microphones are available which are used for spying the enemy camps and on moment we can add actually the armaments also that is used for fighting with the enemy camps so military robots are the robots which are used for spying as well as fighting with the enemies uh, it's of the normal army it is used for fighting with the enemies so the next one is the medical robot the medical robot for conducting surgeries we need a three or four surgeons for doing a complicated surgery and uh, the very important thing in uh, surgery is surgery is the accuracy or the surgery has to be done meticulously to remove the lumps present or something else so the operation or the surgery has to be carried out by three or four uh, surgeons this in a period of time or otherwise the complicated surgeries will take much time during the longer period of surgery the surgeons may get fatigue and the accuracy of the surgery may get reduced to avoid this we are using actually this type of medical robots with the number of hands but anyhow though the, the there is a medical robot the robots are operated by an expert surgeon the robots cannot do the surgery by its own so it is it is handled by a uh, expert surgeon and by that the surgery is done so this is will reduce the this will improve the accuracy of the uh, surgery as well as this will reduce the cost of the surgery also that is the third kind of robot called as medical robots the fourth one the entertainment robots In the entertainment robots uh, nowadays lot of entertainment robots are coming and uh, sony is developing a lot of entertainment robots the robots they are looking like human beings uh, puppies kids like that so these entertainment robots are used for entertaining the uh, kids as well as the adults and uh, some cases uh, the human like uh, small robots will be used for conducting tournaments like football tournaments or hockey tournaments like that and next one is zoo morphic robots so the word itself represents this zoo morphic that is it looks like the animal kingdom of animal animal like robots animal means here uh, the animals birds insects all those things so here first one is the walking robot uh, it looks like an ant and it is having six legs 
it works like an ant actually. So it is a six legged robot. Even eight legged robots like the spider like robots are there. And the next one is a flying robot. It looks like a dragonfly. It can fly and uh, uh, without flipping much its uh, wings, it can fly. And uh, third one, the crawling robot. So in the crawling robot, uh, they can crawl or they can move. Uh, that is the third kind of robot we can see here. And fourth one, the jumping robot or the hopping robot. It looks like a frog, it jumps or hops. So what is the purpose of this kind of zoomorphic robots? It is again, the main purpose is for uh, spying operations or otherwise it is, it is used for uh, finding out human beings or uh, during the natural calamities. Uh, during the natural calamities, the human beings may get trapped into the debris. So in those cases, they cannot be easily identified from externally. So it, it, uh, these type of zoomorphic robots with a camera, they can be go inside the debris and uh, they can view the human beings using the camera. By that actually, the human beings can be identified and they can be rescued quite easily. So that is the next kind of robot called as zoomorphic robots. The next one is the very important robots. Uh, this is what we are going to study in deep. Uh, they are called as industrial robots. So why we need robots in industries? So in industries, some operations are repeated again and again and again. That may cause fatigue to the human operator and uh, the accuracy of the work may reduce. So in those cases, we can use actually the industrial robots there. And uh, whenever you need more productivity, then uh, uh, three three shifts you have to your work that is not possible by a human worker. So in those cases, we can use a industrial robot. And uh, another important area where we can use robots are the the environment is very hazardous. The the very choices the industrial robots. For example, if you see in the second picture, it is a spray painting robot. So the spray painting uh, is an operation. It's a hazardous operation. Because whenever you are uh, doing the spray painting, the paint particles are going to form a mist in the air and when the human being inhales the uh, paint particles, uh, he will be subjected to the lung related problems like asthma. So in those cases, we can use actually the industrial robots. So we are going to concentrate mainly on industrial robots further. So the definition of industrial robot is given by ISO, International Standards Organization. Uh, we can see the definition first, then we will go for the explanation. Uh, automatically controlled, reprogrammable, multi-purpose manipulator, programmable in three or more axes, which may be either fixed in place or mobile for use in industrial automation applications. So here uh, the definition can be divided into number of parts. First one is it is automatically controlled. So your robot is an automatically controlled machine. Without human, much human intervention, it is going to work. So it is automatically controlled. The second part, reprogrammable, means the uh, robot motions as well as the auxiliary functions can be modified as per our requirements without doing much physical alterations. So how these functions or motions can be modified? By modifying the program. So only by modifying the program, we can change the motions or auxiliary functions. That is why it is called as reprogrammable. By modifying the programs. Again and again, we can program it and we can change the motions. That is why it is called as reprogrammable. Next one is called as multipurpose. So multipurpose, what is multipurpose? Multipurpose means this the same robot can be adapted for different applications without physical alterations. That's why it's called as multipurpose. And uh, the next part is the axis. How many number of axes we are going to use? It is three or more axes. So here the axis doesn't mean x, y, z like that. So it means actually the degrees of freedom the robot can give. Okay, if the, the, program, the robot can give 5 degrees of freedom, then the axis of the robot means actually 5. 
Okay, so it represents the uh, degrees of freedom, not exactly the x, y, and z axis alone. So the axis means direction used to specify the robot motion in a linear or rotary mode. In a linear, how many linear uh, motions it can give? How many rotary motions it can give? That gives the degrees of freedom. So this degrees of freedom represents the axis. So with this, uh, we have seen the different kinds of robots as well as the robot definition. So the next interesting thing is that from the name robot originated. Uh, this is an interesting story. The word robot is coined from a Czechoslovakian play named Rosam's Universal Robots the early 1920s by Karl Chapek. So the Karl Chapek is a dramatist and uh, he wrote a play, he is a Czechoslovakian, he wrote a play and uh, the word robota comes from this play actually. So the play is like this, Rosam and his son they try to develop a chemical substance similar to protoplasm, the cell material. And by using this cell material, the protoplasm, they started manufacturing robots. The basic plan is that the robots must serve mankind obediently. And uh, they try to improve this design uh, further and further. And uh, finally, they brought a perfect robot or perfect being. But what happened is, these perfect robots don't want to serve as the slaves to humans. Instead of that, they want to become the masters. So, what they started is, they, they tried to terminate the humans. They tried to kill the robot humans and they want to become the masters. So this is a play uh, written by Karl Chepard. In that actually he used the word robota. It is a Czechoslovakian word, Czech word robota. The uh, word robota means the forced worker. Actually Rosam and his son wanted this forced worker but what happened is finally they become the masters of, uh, on uh, the human beings. So, this word robota means the forced worker and when it is translated to English, it becomes a word robot. So, the word robo comes from the word Czechoslovakian word robota. Robota means forced worker. Next, uh, the from the word robotics, this, he coined this term Robotics. Isaac Asimo. He is also a writer, a science fiction writer. He coined the term robotics, and moreover, he developed three fundamental principles on robotics, or I can say the basic laws of robotics was given by Isaac Asimo. So, Isaac, according to Isaac Asimo, the basic laws of robotics are. The first one, a robot may not injure a human being by action or through inaction allow a human to be harmed. So the robot should not injure a human being. That is the first thing, uh, first law. So the robot should not injure a human being at any time, any at any cost, either by action or by inaction. It should not injure the human being. The second law. The robot must obey the orders by human except when that conflicts with the first law. So it should obey all the commands given by the human, orders given by the human, except that because of the commands it should not harm any human being. So it should not conflict with the first law. So the second law is it should obey the orders except if anything, if, if, if it is conflicted with the first law. The third one, the robot must protect its own existence that conflicts with the 
first or second loss. So it, it has to protect itself. So the third law. So first is for the human safety. Second one is it has to obey the orders of the human beings. And third one, uh, third law represents the uh, robo safety. Okay. So the robo safety is put it in the third place. First place the safety of the humans. Second place only the working of the robo or it has to obey the orders of the human being. And in the third place only the robo safety comes. Okay, so he devised all these uh, three laws of robotics. Till now, these three basic laws are uh, very applicable, very useful to the uh, field of robotics. Next is uh, what we are going to see is how the evolution of robotics happened uh, from the beginning. Okay, so uh, we'll, uh, we are going to take from, we are going to consider from uh, the 14th century. So in 1495, around 1495, we know very well uh, a very famous artist, scientist, you can call him by any name, Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, so he designed the first humanoid robot. Okay, so he is a very, very popular uh, artist. We know the very uh, uh, famous work of him, The Last Supper. So Leonardo da Vinci designed the first humanoid or android robot, right? And then in 1727, a German philosopher and alienist, Albertus Magnus, attempts to create androids. Again, uh, 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 human-like being, they try to create in 1727. 1801, actually there is a breakthrough for automation, the Joseph Jacquard, builds an automated loom that is controlled with uh, punch cards. So uh, before our magnetic tapes or magnetic uh, um, discs, the previous uh, storing device is actually the punched cards. So the punched cards are used as the, are used as the input methods for some of the 20th century's earliest computers. So he developed um, <coughs> a power loom, an automated power loom and uh, by giving inputs through this punched cards, it works automatically. So this is the earliest form of input device uh, in the field of computers. And in 1899, Tesla, uh, even now the name Tesla is very popular. So Nikolai Tesla demonstrates the first remote control vehicle. He demonstrated the remote control vehicle. So the remote control, he developed a remote control boat which could be commanded to go, stop, turn left and right, turn its lights on and off and even submerge. So all these things the boat can do, it will go, stop, turn left, turn right, uh, it has some lights actually, it can be light, turn on the lights and turn off the lights and even submerge. Uh, it looks like a very simple thing but at the time of 1899 uh, it was a major uh, breakthrough actually. So Tesla had done that. And 1921, the word robota is used for the first time in the context of mechanical people in a play called Rosam's Universal Robots by Czech dramatist Karel Kepek. So this is what we discussed earlier. So Karel Kepek devised the word robot. And in 1942, Isaac Asimov is generally credited with the popularization of the term uh, robotics. So, and uh, he developed the Raza of Robotics in 1942. 1948, William Gray Walter is a British robotics pioneer, William Gray Walter. He created autonomous machines called Elmer and LC. He created two machines, Elmer and LC, and uh, it is uh, called as uh, turtle robots. So, uh, these are all actually uh, small kinds of robots, it's not a big industrial robots. These are all small, small development happen in the uh, field of robotics. So, 1959, uh, I can say this is the first industrial robot, uh, robot uh, came actually. First industrial robot by uh, Engelberger. The Engelberger is called as the father of robotics. So, Engelberger developed the first industrial robot. So, what is the weight of the robot? It is nearly about 2 tons weight. With hydraulic actuator. So the total weight of the robot itself is two tons, two thousand kg. Okay. Nineteen sixty-one, 
Uh, Innovation USA, they installed the first industrial robot in General Motor. It is uh, nearly about a 4,000 pounds arm used for stacking the high die cast metal. So uh, that is happening, um, that was happened in 1961. 1969, General Motor installed the uh, Unimation spot welding robots in large down assembly plants. That was the first spot welding robot. Uh, that uh, was uh, happened in 1969. The same year, 1969, Trafa Norway offers first commercial painting robot. So it was a, a, a development from a spot welding robot that was happened in the year 1969. The same year, 1969, Trafa Norway also developed a, a new commercial painting robot. When you are comparing with the spot welding robot, a spray painting robot, the spray painting robot needs much better control because it is going to be a continuous path control. So that such a breakthrough happened uh, in the same year 1969. 1974, Kawasaki, Japan, they developed first arc welding robots for fabricating motorcycle frames. So this is also a continuous path robot, uh, Kawasaki, Japan. They developed uh, for their own industry, the Kawasaki motors. So there, these welding robots are used for fabricating the uh, motorcycle frames. In 1975, Olivetti, Italy, they developed a Cartesian coordinate robot. It is a two-hand robot. Uh, it was named as Sigma. They are mainly used for assembly operations. So previously a spot welding and then a painting robot, then an art welding robot. Now it's going to be an assembly uh, robot. It's used for assembly operations. 1978, again Innovation USA developed an assembly robot. It was, it was named as a Puma. A Puma means Programmable Universal Machine for Assembly. Uh, the, this is also an assembly robot. It was used for General Motor. 1978, University of Amanasi, Japan developed again an assembly robot. It is named as uh, SCARA. It was named as SCARA. Selective Compliance Assembly Robot Arm. So uh, the, the, the acronym SCARA means Selective Compliance Assembly Robot Arm. Uh, it was in the year, same year 1978. So 78, uh, we got two major robots actually. One is Puma, a programmable universal machine for assembly. In the same year, we had another robot, a Selective Compliance Assembly Robot Arm, SCARA. 1981, PAR Systems USA introduced its first industrial gantry robot. Uh, Kawasaki Japan developed first art welding robots for. Okay, so this PAR Systems, the uh, USA introduced its first industrial gantry robot. And in the year 1984, ADAPT USA introduced the ADAPT 2, the first direct drive SCARA robot. We already know the SCARA robots. It is a direct drive star or robot. What is direct drive means? Uh, the drives are directly connected to the joints. There is no intermediate uh, power transmission devices like gears or uh, bells or chains like that. So the drives are directly connected to the joints. That is called as uh, direct drives. So that was happened in the year 1984. 1992, uh, Dumeret, Switzerland, again, they developed a a packaging robot, uh, it was named as Delta. So this packaging robot packed the pretzels into blister trays. Pretzels is a type of biscuits uh, into the blister trays. Uh, that is uh, a packing robot was developed in the year 1992. 1998, based on the uh, Delta, Delta robot model, ABB further developed, uh, ABB Sweden, they further developed the fastest picking robot. So it picks uh, the material in a very fast way. So it's, it was named as flex picker. It about 120 objects per minute. Or I can say it in two objects per seconds. Okay. So the next is 1999. Right, Germany. They introduced an integrated laser beam guiding within the robot arm. So instead of external guiding, the robot was guided itself by using a integrated laser beam. And in 2004, Motorman Japan introduced the robot control system which can control 
simultaneously the four robots, nearly about 38 axes at a time, uh, that was in the year 2004. In the year 2006, Kuka, this is actually a Germany company, Kuka, Germany, presents the first lightweight robot made up of aluminium having weight of 16 kg and a payload capacity of 7 kg. So the total weight of the uh, robot itself is only 60 kg, but it can uh, carry or it can lift, that is what we are calling just the payload, so it can lift 7 kg up to 7 kg. So you can see the transformation. So the transformation of uh, the first robot which is having uh, 2000 kg weight to 16 kg weight. So the initial robot is nearly about 2 tons. From that there is a greater transformation to 16 kg. But the very important thing is it can carry a payload of 7 kg also. That is very important. So in the year 2010, Fanuk Japan, they launched the learning control robot. So the robot which learns the vibration for higher acceleration and speeds. So during the movements or depending upon the movements, if there is more speed or more acceleration, then it may cause actually the vibration. So if the vibration comes, it adjusts its speed or acceleration accordingly. By that, uh, it can reach the uh, point. Or sometimes, if the speed is very, very uh, low, then also it will increase the, the speed to reach that particular point. So by this, uh, what happened is, this is going to reduce the uh, cycle time in a greater way. So that was developed in the year 2010. So uh, this is the uh, timeline I am going to give you. And the next thing is, where robotics make, make, make a role in the automation. Okay. So what is the role of robotics in the automation? That is the next part. So before that, we should know what is automation. Then, in which areas actually the robot can be applied or employed in the automation process. So automation is concerned with the use of mechanical, electrical, electronic and computer based systems in the operation and control of production. So the word manufacturing itself comes from uh, doing it from by doing it by hand that is actually manu fetas. So doing it by hand that is actually manufacturing. So the human intervention is always there in the manufacturing or in production. So we have to reduce the intervention of human being. That is what actually automation is. So the automation means we try to reduce the involvement of human beings in uh, the manufacturing. For example, if you see an ordinary lathe. So an ordinary lathe, the human operator is going to move the uh, slide. By that actually the cutting operation is carried out. So the control is in the hands of human being. So just another development is instead of uh, the human beings, we are going for semi-automatic lathes and automatic lathes. There we are using a camshaft which replaces the human being. And by that the volume of production is going to increase. And the next step is from the uh, semi-automatic lathe, we move to the uh, CNC machines. The CNC machines, by modifying a simple program, we can modify the operations quite easily by using a computer control. So all these things are the evolution of the automations, the different automations. So we are using either mechanical, electrical, electronic or computer based systems to improve the production methods by preventing or by uh, reducing the human intervention. Okay, so the automation is classified into three groups. One is called as fixed automation, second one is programmable automation, and third one is flexible automation. So what fixed automation is known? The fixed automation is known as hard automation. Why it is called as hard automation is designing a sequence of processing operation, and this sequence is fixed. 
by the equipment configuration. So, uh, for example, if you are taking an assembly line, the sequence of operations are carried out in a particular way. In that uh, sequence only, the machines are arranged. That is actually called as fixer automation. So, in the fixer automation, the production facility in which the sequence of processing operations is fixed by the equipment configuration. So, first a machine, second machine, third machine, like that actually the product is going to or the raw material is going to travel and it will come as a final product. So, this is actually called as fixed automation. The very uh, example is machine trans machining transfer lines found in the automated industries. So this machine transfer lines as well as assembly transfer lines found in the automated industry, they are coming under the fixed automation process. So, the advantage of fixed automation is the production volume is more. So, even in a single day, we can ma manufacture 1000 cars, that is the uh, production volume we can get, but the product variety is going to be very small. Why the product variety is small is because the sequence of operations is fixed. So, you can't modify the sequence of operations. So, by that, we can't manufacture a number of uh, product varieties. So, the product variety is limited here, but the production volume, that is, the number of product, uh, number of products per day, that is going to be more, right? Um, next is the programmable automation. The programmable automation is a form of automation for producing products in batches. So, the previous case, it is going to be the product quality is very, very less. But here, the, we can produce the products in batches. Okay. So, in, case, in this case, for every new batch, the production equipment must be reprogrammed and changed over to accommodate the new product style. So, in this case, you remember, you can change the product, product configuration. By that further, what you have to do is, you have to modify the programs to accommodate the new product. So, only thing is, there is a change in the program to accommodate the new product. So, that's why it's called as programmable automation. So, here, uh, when you are comparing with the previous fixed automation, the production volume is going to be low. Comparatively, it is going to be low. But, the product variety gets increased or more product variety you can do with this type of programmable automation. The very good example is a numerical control machine tool or as computer CNC, CNC machine tool is a good example for programmable automation. So in a CNC machine, whenever there is a change in the product, so you have to change the program only, you are not going to change the physical configuration of the machine. Right? So, that is actually the programmable automation. The third one, the flexible automation. The flexible automation, it is an extension of programmable automation. So, like, like the previous case, the uh, programmable automation, it is only an extension of programmable automation. What is the thing is, here also we are going to program the equipment. But, the programming is done in offline. In the programmable automation, the program is done in online and in the flexible automation, the programming is done in offline. What is the advantage of this doing this? So, whenever there is a change in product, the change in programming that is done in offline and it is downloaded to the particular machine. So, by that actually, the machine downtime is reduced. So, that is what actually the uh, advantage of the flexible automation. So, uh, the programming is accomplished at a computer terminal without using the product equipment. So, instead of doing it out on the own machine, on the particular machine, I, I do it in a, um, a remote computer and then I am downloading it to the equipment. By that, I will reduce the downtime of that particular machine. So, this is what actually flexible automation. So, the example is flexible manufacturing system. Here, the product variety and production volume which lie between fixed and programmable automation. So, on the one hand, more uh, production volume in the case of fixed automation, on the other hand, more product variety in the case of programmable automation. So, FMS lie in between this uh, a medium production volume as well as a medium production product variety. So, that is flexible automation. So, 
in these uh, three automations where robots come into picture so the robots are used in programmable and flexible automation so in fixed automation there is not much robot is used and the very important areas the two areas one is the programmable automation and in the flexible automation you can see from the diagram the what we have discussed so far the production quantity is more for fixed automation and the product variety is more for programmable automation and flexible automation lie in between these two and in these two areas that is the programmable automation and flexible automation the robotics is employed or robots are employed the <coughs> the robot the, uh, the very important areas the robots can be employed as material handling applications processing operations as well as assembly and inspections these three areas the robots are used in the uh, programmable automation as well as in the flexible automation so this uh bar chart represents how well actually the robots are used in the industries what is the operational stock of industrial robots that is given in 1000 units so you can see from the diagram the bar chart from 2009 to 2019 there is a marvelous growth from 1021 to 2722 that means it is 27 lakhs 22000 units that is used worldwide nearly 27 lakhs 22000 robot populations or uh, populations there in the industries for uh, serving the industries so it started with uh, only 1021 uh, into into so you have to multiply it with 1000 so it is uh, uh, 10 lakh 21000 units to 27 lakhs 22000 units so this is about uh, the worldwide picture if you see another uh, interesting bar chart so this is about how the what is the population of uh, what is the operation stock of industrial robots in various continents so this blue is asia and australia and second one is europe and third one is uh, the americas so uh, interestingly or astonishingly you can see the more uh, robots are used in the asian uh, uh, asian and australian continents rather than the american continents Okay, so it is nearly about 521 in the year 2010, and it reaches uh, 1,688,000. That is actually again this is in thousand of units, uh, so it is 16,88,000 units. That is used nowadays in Asia and Australia itself. So the more population, the more robots are used in Asia and Australia rather than uh, the Americas. So normally we think. uh the, uh the america is uh, an advanced country and they are using more robots not like that are, uh, the most asian countries as well as australian countries they use robots more than uh, europeans as well as uh, europe as well as america so the advantages of robots one is uh, the flexibility and reprogrammability so the flexibility it is having a greater flexibility as well as reprogrammability so the robots can program for different operations as well as because of this programmability it is having greater flexibility also second one is even after 1000 uh, operations even after 1 uh, lakh operations it is going to provide you the same quality of work so it is going to improve the product quality because whenever you use a human operator after a few operations the human gets fatigue and uh, the product quality is going to reduce so that is not the case uh, when you are using robots even after several or even after thousands and uh, ten thousands then this uh, robot is going to give you the same product quality and third one is a uh, greater response time to inputs than humans so it will uh, uh, operate in a very quicker way it will respond in a very quicker way so greater response time to inputs than humans next fourth one is maximize capital intensive equipments in multiple workshops as i already mentioned 
uh, the robots can be uh, operated for three shifts continuously without any uh, stoppage actually. So by that it is going to provide you the capital uh, because robots are very uh, capital intensive equipments but you can get the return of investment by operating them in even in three shifts actually. And uh, next one is the accident reduction and uh, next one is reduction of hazardous exposure of human workers uh, it is also already explained so whenever there is an hazardous environment uh, the, the the best way is to replace the human workers by a so by a robot next is uh, less susceptible to work stoppages so always uh, the robot can continue its work without any uh, stoppages as I already mentioned even it can work for all the three ships. So this is the next advantage less susceptible to work stoppages. What are the major disadvantages? The first disadvantage is uh, the thickly populated countries like India it is going to replace the human labor. So this may lead to greater unemployment. Already uh, uh, the unemployment is already there because of the uh, application of robots it may reduce the human labors working in an industry. Automation as well as the robotics they may reduce the number of human labors working in an industry. So by that the employment and unemployment may grow. Right. The next is uh, sometimes the technology what they are advertising does not disclose some of the hidden disadvantages. What are the advantages they try to project actually but there may be some hidden disadvantages that the company may not disclose. And last one not only the cost of the robot there are some other hidden costs are associated with the technology. Whenever you are uh, purchasing a robot, we need, we need to make a robot cell. We need additional uh, equipments are needed to accommodate the robot. So that may increase the hidden cost. So the hidden cost because of the associated technology that must be purchased and integrated into a functioning cell. So if you want to make a robot cell, you should not you, need not, you not only purchase a robot alone, but you have to purchase some other equipments to integrate the entire cell. So that will increase the cost. So these are the disadvantages. The main disadvantages is it may, I, I use the term actually, they may lead to greater unemployment. So what are the various uh, robotic industries worldwide, major robotic industries worldwide? Uh, most of the industries nowadays, uh, the robotics is, the major role is played by uh, the Japanese people, so uh, the Japanese industries like Fanu, Panasonic, Seiko, Sankyo, Motorman, Mitsubishi, all these things, all these industries are uh, coming under the, uh, coming, uh, all the industries are in Japan actually. The other industries like uh, KUKA, KUKA is from Germany and uh, ABB Sweden, some uh, industries from US also. So these are major robotic industries. Uh, worldwide. So what about India? So in India also there are a number of robotic startups uh, in the recent days. So Asimov Robotics, Sastra Robotics, Systematics, uh, Gridboards, Difacto, Grey Orange, Omnipresent Robot Tech, Gear Autom Autonomous Systems. All these uh, robotic startups are for different applications. Uh, they are uh, manufacturing robots. So these are some uh, startup industries in the India, in India. So with this, uh, I, I want to conclude this video. So we have so far discussed about what are the various uh, types of robots. So what is an industrial robot? So in, what is the definition of an industrial robot? How the uh, industrial robot evaluated? And uh, where we can employ robotics in the automation and 
what are the advantages and disadvantages of robotics. So, thank you.